Today, we're gonna to talk about IP addresses and domain names. And basically, if you have a domain name and you wanna get the IP address, how do we do it in our programs? Welcome back, everybody. We're gonna talk about networking. It's been a little while since we've talked about networking and sockets. I guess today's topics, we're not actually gonna be doing much with sockets, but this topic is definitely sockets adjacent because often, and this includes my examples, often when you're looking at network programming examples, you see examples that take an IP address, but you're like, I'm really used to working with a domain name, something like this. This is how we're used to referring to destinations on the web. And so some of you out there may be wondering, how do I go from this to an address like this that then I can use in some of these examples? And I've shown you in some previous examples how you can use some command line tools to do this lookup. But let's say you don't want to do that. You want to do that in your actual C program. You just want it to happen all at once. So your user types in a domain name and then it's able to figure out the IP address and go from there. So that's our task for today. We are gonna produce some source code today. As always, source code is available through Patreon. Thank you so much for all of you who support the channel. I really appreciate all your help. You make this possible. But enough of that. So yeah, thanks for being here. Now let's get into the code. Okay, so today I am starting with a really simple program basically an empty program with some header files up here. I have a simple make file also that is going to compile program called get IP because that's what we're going to do. We're basically going to take a domain name and we're going to get its IP address or addresses. So that's basically our task for today. Let's start out with just a little bit of uh, checking to make sure that they ran it correctly. So let's say if argc is not equal to two, then let's come in here and just print f usage the name of the program followed by a host name or a domain name. And then let's come in here and we'll do, this will be argv0. So our, basically the name of our program. And then let's return exit failure because yeah, because this didn't work out. You didn't run it correctly. Okay, so this is just checking to make sure that we ran the program correctly. And then let's just come in here and grab, let's make a string here. That's going to be our host name. And we're just going to set this equal to argv1. Okay, so the first argument coming in, when I run this, it's going to be something like get IP. And then I'm going to type in something like jacobsorber.com, right? So some domain, some host name. So that's how we're going to run it. So that's, so I'm saving it here, giving it a name. So it is readable and ready to go. And then there's a couple of things we're going to do. We're going to use a struct here. So struct adder info. And we're going to make a couple of these. So the first one, let's call it uh, hint, right? Okay, so this is going to tell the function that is going to do this lookup for us. It's going to tell it what we're looking for, okay? Interestingly, this is also what we're going to get back, okay? So we've got something like hint, and then let's also have something like a pointer and say result, okay? So we've got the input, which is this hint, and then we have what's gonna come back, and that's gonna be a pointer to this address info struct. Okay, and what we are going to be passing in, eventually we're gonna to get to this as a function called get adder info. And this we're gonna pass in a host name, and we're gonna pass in, let's check the args really quick. So we have a host name, and we also have this server name. We're gonna ignore that for now. So we're just gonna pass this in as null, and then we're gonna pass in this hint struct. This is going to basically just tell us, tell it what we're looking for. And then we're going to pass in the address of our result. Okay. So this is going to allow them to pass back something. Now notice that I didn't allocate any space for result. That's going to happen inside this get adder info function. And then this get adder info function is also going to return some int, let's call it status maybe, or it's stat, I don't know. Um, yeah, I would say result, but uh, yeah, status will work. So now this is what we're gonna do, but of course we haven't really specified this hint at all. So let's let's do that really quick. So we can come in here and say memset, the address of hint. So that's, we're gonna take basically the memory pointed at that is hint, and we're gonna set it to zero. So we're gonna start out just by setting everything to zero in this struct. And so it's gonna be the size of hint, and then now we can set, so now all these are set to zero. Now we can come in here and set the things that we actually want to, the hints we want to give. So I can come in here and say something like, I want, you know, what do I want the, the family to be? So if I wanted, let's say just IPv4 addresses, so that's IP version four, 
I could say AF INET, right? So I could do that. I could also come in here and say, so I could say AF INET 6 if I want IPv6 addresses. So let me just comment this really quick. But then, yeah, so then if we come down here, the other option I guess we could have here is if we don't really care, if we want everything, then we can say unspec, okay? So all of these are just different constants for specifying different address families. So that's AF, it's address family to so the IP version four, address family, the IP version six address family. And in this case though, let's just for now, let's go with this unspecified. And that just means we'll just take whatever you give us. Give us all the addresses. So then also, if we want, we can come down here and also, you can see there's a bunch of other options here. So we could also say, we could specify our socket type, okay? So let's say that I know that I want to create a stream socket, okay? So something like sock stream. So what I'm saying is basically, I'm going to make a TCP connection to this thing. That's my plan. So please tell me what address I should use for TCP connections. Now, often what you're gonna find is we're gonna get two different entries, we're gonna get two different addresses, one for stream sockets and one for datagram sockets, uh, basically saying use the same address for all of these. But I just wanted to show you that we do have options. So, and if I leave this off, then it's just going to basically give me again, all of the different types. It's not going to specify. Okay. So let's come down here. And if I just say if status, basically meaning that there was some kind of error that came back, it's going to return zero, which is pretty typical of a lot of standard C functions. They return zero for success. Otherwise you get these different error cases. So same thing here. And then we're just gonna come down here and print out some kind of error saying, I uh, get adder info failed. And we could of course print out specific error information. I'm not gonna do that right now. Let's just return exit failure. Okay, so we, we had a problem. We could of course recover from that and try something else. In this example, I'm just gonna have it bail. We're just trying to keep this example as simple as possible. So now if we get to this point, we know we have actually got a successful result here. Okay, so we have something to work with. And this is actually a little interesting. What it's actually gonna give us is, it's gonna give us a linked list. And this result pointer is the head of that linked list. And that is because get adder info is going to try to resolve this name and get the addresses back, but it may get many entries, right? There may be many entries that match this name. And so it's gonna give me all of them. And it's gonna give them to me in a list. And as sometimes I have a hard time remembering to free and clean up everything when I'm done, just so no one hollers at me, let's just come down here. There is a special function that is provided called free adder info. This will free the entire list. So we wouldn't wanna just say free result. If we do this, then it's just going to free just the head of the linked list. So we're gonna, we're gonna have memory leaks. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do this free adder info result. This knows that it's a linked list and it will go through and free everything for me. Okay, so now the question is, what should we do with it? Let's let's just, for this example, let's just print out some information about the addresses and then you and your program can do whatever you need to do with it to make it do something useful. But so what I wanna do is let's just make a temporary pointer, just like we would anytime we go through a linked list. If you haven't seen linked list, do check out my other linked list videos. That may make this whole thing make more sense. But so I'm just gonna say, we're gonna have a struct adder in so the same type as we had before and a pointer and let's call it temp, right? And it's gonna start out pointing to result. And so then we're gonna loop through this. So we're gonna loop as long as temp is not equal to null. And so as long as we have a valid node, we're going to then print out that node and then we'll continue. And then in this loop down here, we're going to, once it's all done, we're gonna say temp equals temp arrow and we're going to get it's not next before we just use dot next but here it is ai which is address info next okay so this is the next record that was returned okay so this code right here is basically going to start us at the beginning and then as long as there's something next we're just going to keep going and get the next one the next one the next one until we run to the end of the list okay so that's really all we're doing here in this loop now let's come in here and let's actually try to get the address and there's a bunch of general stuff we can do first so let's just print out some stuff. And I'm gonna start out with, let's say, let's just print out address. Saying we've got an address here. And then I'm gonna break these up into individual lines just in case that makes it easier for some people to read. But then I'm gonna use tabs to kind of indent each of these entries. And let's then print out, like for example, we can say the type. 
Okay, specifically meaning the socket type. So here, let's print out, it's just an integer, and we can say, for example, temp socket type. Right, so this is gonna tell us what type of socket this address is for. And we can come down here, let's also get the family. Remember up here, we specified the family. Well, this these each of these records is going to have a family that comes with it. So we'll come in here and say AI family. And then the last thing I wanna print out for this example is the, the actual address itself. So actually maybe let me change this, make this not address, let's say entry. But so then address down here, I need some kind of string, right? I wanna print out some string that represents the IP address. And that's actually not already, that's not readily available in this struct. So if I come down here and I say here, you see this, this canon name, that's not what we're looking for. Okay, so instead, what we're looking for here is, well, you can see this adder here, that's actually a struct of its own, right? It's, it's a struct. And how we interpret that struct is going to depend on this family. It's going to depend on what type of address we're looking at. And so I want to come down here. And before we do this, let's just make, let's make a string for this. So something like char, and we'll call this something like address string. And then there is a handy constant here. We're going to do inet six address string length because an IPv6 address, that's the longest this could possibly be. So we're going to use this to say, this is how long the longest string string could be for an IPv6 address. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use here just to make sure that we have enough space. And then if I come down here, we just need to do a quick test. So I can do something like this, where I say if temps family is AF inet. So if we get here, we got one thing and then else this is gonna be for our IP version six. So we've got V6 before, something like that. And then I'm basically just looking to get the address of where these things are. So let's make this, let's make a void pointer called address, right? This is this is the location where the actual bytes for the address are gonna be. So ideally what we'd like to do is to say AI adder like that, but well, it's not that simple, right? Because this is a very, this is a generic struct and it's gonna be different actually, depending on the family. So what I need to do is the fact that I know this is an AF inet, I know this is a IPv4 address. What I'm gonna do is to cast this. Okay, I happen to know that this is a struct sock adder in pointer. Okay, so I happen to know that this address is going to point to one of these, right? That's this type, right? This is the older style struct that was for IP version. Whoa, that was for IP version four. Okay, so if I cast this address pointer to be a sock adder in pointer, then I have some more options available and I can come back here and I can see this sin adder. And these are actually gonna be the bytes that I want, right? So this will say here, point to the actual location that has the four bytes that, is, that are the IP version four address. And then we're gonna do something very similar with IPv6, except that the struct actually changes. So here what we're gonna do is sock adder in six. Okay, so this is a, another pointer, but it's just a different structure. And then down here, the entry is sin six adder. Okay, and you notice there were some other entries in there. If you wanted to look at those entries, you could. But for today, this is what I'm gonna limit myself to. So then now we actually have this pointer. We have a pointer to where the bytes of this address are. Then the socket library also gives us a very convenient little function called inet ntop, which is basically going from network to printable. Okay, so, so the network representation of an address, which is what we're currently dealing with, to the printable string version of that address. Okay, so then inet ntop, we're first gonna pass in the family, okay, so we gotta tell it how, what type of address this is. Is it IPv4, is it IP, IPv6? And then we pass in the pointer to the actual bytes that are the address. So this is telling it, this is where you look for that address. And then we need to look at where do we want it to put the string it's gonna convert it to. So we are gonna go to address string and size of address string. Okay. Now, if you didn't make this, like I made this an array, so this is gonna work. If you didn't, if you like allocated this on the heap somewhere, 
somewhere, what you would want to do is you would want to just take this instead and say this kind of six address length or adder string length. Either of these will work fine, but just keep in mind that if this is a pointer, not an array, then the size of will give you the, the size of a pointer, which would be eight on this machine, rather than the actual size of the array that it points to. Okay, so now at this point, after we've done this check, now we have, and after we've called inet ntop, we now have the string representation for our address. So now we can come down here and instead of doing TMP, we can do address string, because that's what we converted to. And so now I think our program will probably work. So let's come down here, let's get out of the man page and make, oh, what did I do? Ah, right, I am trying to assign a struct to be a pointer type, oops, okay. Okay, now, we, now we're dealing with pointers to pointers. Sorry about that. In case that went quite quickly, basically what I was doing is this right here points to a struct, to, a, to an actual IN6 adder struct or IN adder struct, and this is an IN6 adder struct, and I wanted the address of it rather than the thing itself. Okay, so now it compiles just fine. So now we should be able to come in here and say get IP, something like uh, jacobsorber.com, and it looks like it worked. Okay, so you notice here that we have two entries. We have a type two. So both of these are IPv4. Okay, so that's family two is IPv4. Not sure why it's two. Someone decided it was going to be two, but we have type two and we have type one. Now the types again have to do with the kind of socket we're requesting. So if I came up here and instead of saying uh, that I just want anything, if I said I want a stream socket and we come back here and compile, then you can see now we only get one. Okay, so we requested type one. So it's just giving us the address for type one. And similarly, if I came down here and said I want datagram sockets, then recompile, then you can see now I just get type two. And just for completeness, let's come down here and also get a website that has more than just that one address. So let's look at google.com. Now here you notice that we're gonna get an IPv4 address and an IPv6 address. Some names are going to be associated with both. So if I were to come up here and comment this out, then we're gonna end up, if we recompile it and run this with Google, then now you're gonna get four, right? So we get four entries. Um, we're getting two IPv6 addresses, one for datagrams, one for streams, and two IPv4 addresses, one for datagrams, one for streams. But anyway, the point is, is now whether I want this in the network representation or whether I want to print it out, which is what I did here, I now, this is how you basically can do a domain or host name lookup to get the IP address that would then be used in your other sockets function functions to help your client be a little more user friendly so that someone can actually type in the name of the domain they want to connect to as opposed to having to look up the IP address. So I hope this gives you a good idea of how you can get addresses either in network format or in like a string, like human readable format for your programs. There is a lot more that we could talk about in here, specifically about how domain names are resolved. If you want to see a video on DNS and specifically how we could even write our own code that interacts with DNS, please do let me know. Also, I mentioned datagram sockets in here. That's Those are sockets that use UDP as their main application level protocol as opposed to TCP. I haven't done a video on UDP. If there is interest, do let me know down in the comments. And uh, who knows, maybe in the next couple of weeks, I'll put together a video on UDP. That could be fun. But I hope this was useful and entertaining. And I hope you learned something new. Like, subscribe, click something on the way out. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see in future videos. And until next week, I'll see you later.